I don't know if I would have stayed at Lafayette without Frisbee. The people and the connection and the authenticity that I experienced there was ignition for me becoming myself, in addition to being my namesake. Hi, my name is Jet Downey. I use they, them pronouns. I was a member of the class of 2019, and I was a psychology, anthropology, and sociology double major. When I came to Lafayette in fall of 2015, I did not look like the person sitting here. Bridget had long blonde hair and about 20 less piercings. I chose to come to Lafayette as it was a small campus where I knew that I could get individualized attention with professors and really make a difference on campus. I found Frisbee at the first club fair. I went, I signed up, I went to the first practice and never turned back. I wasn't actually the person who came up with Jet, although I wish I was. Jet was actually a Frisbee nickname because here at Lafayette and in Frisbee culture, we have some pretty weird nicknames. I didn't really like Jet because it didn't feel too original. It was just kind of a portion of my original name. But I would soon find out that Jet would mean the world to me as there is an essential portion of me within Bridget. In addition to exploring myself through Ultimate Frisbee, I also had the opportunity to travel to the Netherlands for um, my semester abroad, my fall junior year. This would be the first time in my life that I was out. During my time in Amsterdam, I was able to do LGBT research for the first time in my life. But at the same time, I was also pursuing my other passion of Frisbee. I was able to play on the Dutch women's team which would later be an interesting experience to recall as I don't identify as a woman. During my time abroad, I would also meet someone who I didn't realize at the time would serve as a critical person to me. I met a friend who identified as gender non-binary and when I heard the term non-binary for the first time, it's like a light came on and I realized that's the word I've been looking for. That's me. And I was sad in a way because where was this word before? Lafayette didn't give it to me. And so when I realized that this word meant so much to me and would soon be an incredibly strong part of my identity, I wanted to come back to Lafayette and give other people this vocabulary or this education that we need. I knew that I wanted to provide this education to Lafayette through a couple different ways. One was through research, as I think that it's a really strong form of advocacy that's underused and often gatekept. The second was through um, education in a personal sense. So I joined Safe Zone and became a Safe Zone peer educator where I did staff and student trainings on LGBT competency. I also worked with another set of students to create a coalition of students and staff that are of LGBTQ plus identities so that we could have a network and a resource and a mentorship that we have always needed and a lot of us wanted at Lafayette. When I came back to Lafayette as someone who was an out gender non-binary and queer individual, I wanted to bring attention to all the things we needed to change here on the campus. One of the ways I wanted to do this was specifically through research. I decided to take on a rather ambitious dual honors thesis in psychology and anthropology and sociology. In this project, I would try and identify how the experience of stigma can impact the mental health and well being of LGBTQ folks. So I spoke with Professor Shaw about this possibility. I remember when Jet told me about the thesis, and my first impression about the thesis was that's impossible. I'm being frank here. And one reason is the population that they wanted to study is a population that's, that's difficult to reach because these are not always people that are used to talking about 
things that are very personal to them. Many of the people that do honors theses at Lafayette, they study undergraduate opinions about this or that, but that wasn't going to be sufficient for JET. They wanted to study real people, real situations that were not college students. After speaking with Professor Shaw several times, he recommended that I speak with Professor Bell about pursuing a thesis. In the spring of 2018, Jet came into my office and asked uh, if they could do a research thesis with me. And we had never met before prior to that. And due to their sort of passion for learning about social psychology and the psychology of prejudice, uh, I was interested in working with them and sort of inspired by uh, their excitement. The process of doing the dual honors thesis was tumultuous, emotional, had a lot of ups and downs. I think that one of the things that helped me get through that first defense was I got to wear a men's silk vest for the first time and having my gender presentation feel so confident, help my actual presentation feel confident, and that alignment was really powerful for me. After JET started their thesis project, they took the Psychology of Prejudice, which is a senior capstone in the psychology department, and it was a real treasure to have JET in the classroom. I hope that was a really unique experience for them. This was a unique experience for me to see them in the classroom and be able to make these new connections that I knew was sort of facilitated by the research that we were doing together before we started class together. At the end of the second semester, when JET presented their final thesis, which included all of the data, I noticed that the data were in many ways messy, as they often are in this type of study, and JET handled everyone's concerns about that with unbelievable skill. I've taught thousands and thousands of students during my 25 years here. And I can honestly say that Jet is one of, if not the most courageous student I've ever taught during my time at Lafayette. After graduation, I started working at the Alley Forney Center in New York City, which is an LGBTQ plus organization that serves homeless youth. So I was able to work with queer and trans young people who are currently experiencing homelessness. Right now, I'm living in New York City and attending Columbia School of Social Work's master's program. I will be graduating in spring 2023. I would like to thank Professor Bell and Professor Shaw for providing me the inspiration for social psychology and providing me with the means to pursue research that I know to be essential in identity, understanding, and pride. When I think about Jet, a couple of words come to mind. The first word that comes to mind is courage. I don't believe that Jet set out to be a trailblazer. I don't think that's what they desired, but they were a trailblazer. 